Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back my dear friends and dear students, a very good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all of you wherever you are uh, in this part of this world whether in India or abroad. And as you know this is the DADM which is data analysis and decision making 2 course um, or lecture series under the NPTEL MOOC uh, lecture. And this total course, this course uh, total um, uh, number of weeks is 12 which is uh, 30 hours, 30 hours being expanded into, uh, into 60 lectures because each uh, lecture is for half an hour and each week we have 5 lectures after each um, week we have assignments. So, as you can see we are in the 33rd lecture which is basically the 7th week going on, 2 weeks have already, uh, 2 classes have already been completed for the 7th week. And my good name is Raghunandan Singhupta from the IME department, IIT Kanpur. So, if you remember, we were discussing Topsis method and the concept of outranking was coming up in the discussion that how would you outrank decision 1 with respect to decision 2 or alternative 1 with respect to alternative 2. So, in, ca in case that is there, you will basically consider the criteria also to make the decision. And uh, when you are, you are doing that, you will basically have um, uh, the concept that there is an ideal solution and you will try to find out the, so the distance, positive and a negative sense that will come later on, the concept of distance based on the ideal solution, how close or how far it is. So, if it is positive ideal solution which is which you want, so obviously you will try to be as close as possible to the positive ideal solution. So, hence, you will give positive benefit to your decision. In that case, if i and j, i and j being basically the nomenclature trying to basically mark the alternatives 1 to m and if i and j are being compared alternatives and uh, for any criteria and if it is positive, so obviously, we will give to them the distance is, is as close as positive possible to the positive ideal solution. So, it will be a positive benefit if it is closer to the negative ideal solution it will be negative. Similarly, if it is further away from the positive ideal solution it would basically lose its is uh, importance that alternative with respect to the other which you are trying to compare and if it is further away from the negative ideal solution obviously, in that case the negativity would start decreasing going towards positivity. So, we are as I said we would not consider uh, too close to a positive solution means too far from the negative solution or too close to the negative solution it means that it is too far from the positive solution we would not consider that in the sense that asymmetry uh, city of the decision would be maintained. So, I was discussing the, the pseudo code based on which we will solve a problem slowly. So, I, I in the last class which is in the 30 second class I, I did start I hardly spend about 1 minute 2 minute for this algorithm but, uh, and then I said that I will stop it here because the half an hour was almost over. So, I said I again take up this algorithm or based on which the procedure based on which you will work and try to solve the problem. Now, the algorithms can be changed in the sense general flow process would be the same, but the methodology or at, at each and every step the decision or see for example, the utility function normalization all this concept may change. So, that would depend on the decision maker as I told that um, this utility function is important. So, considering those are changing, but we will follow the general structure of the algorithm accordingly. So, as I said you will basically have x matrix which is m cross n, m is the number of uh, alternatives, n is the number of decision um, the criteria and this x which uh, matrix 
would basically be each cell would give you the corresponding values which accrues to that alternative based on the criteria. So, cell C for example, A11 would basically be the corresponding value which is coming out from criteria 1 to alternative 1. Similarly, cell A31 would be the corresponding value which is accruing or, or being given by criteria 1 to alternative 3 and, and so on and so forth. Apart from that, you and these and A's would be the, the corresponding alternatives and small c's would basically be the or capital C, they are not the, the concept of criteria. So, c's would basically my, my mistake, c's would definitely be the capital C would definitely be the criteria because the c what, what I am referring here is not the c what we have referred in the electro process, remember that. And we will have basically a matrix w where w1 1 then w 2 2 w 2 3 3 3 w 4 4 so on and so forth which is the principal diagonal with the values which will be assigned to of the weights based on the fact that what what um, uh, weightages or what importance you will give to the criteria in making the decision. We should also ensure I am still in in the, um, the line 1 we should also in, ensure that the sum of the weights should be 1 and we will basically find out the normalization based on the the utility function. Now, remember one thing, I am mentioning it time and again, so please bear with me. The utility function which we will be utilizing would be uh, constant for that set of, of procedure which you are doing, point 1. We will also try to maintain that if the person is going to take decision stage by stage, obviously the utility function should not change. Point number 4 is that when you are trying to normalize, use the concept of normal, normalizing along the row or along the column such that you maintain the parity from step from step 1 to step 2, step 2 to step 3, so on and so forth. So, once you find out see for example, the, the, the normalized matrix, you will basically multiply the normalized matrix with the weights to get the so called normalized weighted uh, values which are uh, the percentage, percentage wise uh, um, uh, so called utility, uh, normalized utility which you will be getting for alternative 1 with respect to criteria 1 or alternative 3 with respect to criteria 4 so on and so forth. But because, because the size of the matrix would not change, what I am saying that when you are trying to find out y, y is equal to basically x into w, here x is a normalized vector, the size of x is m cross n, size of w is n cross n. So, m cross n multiplied by n cross n gives you the final matrix of y as m cross n, m as in Mangalore, n as in Nagpur, which means that I have basically per for each of the columns I have the criteria and corresponding to each of the rows I have the basically the the alternatives. So, each cells would give you the overall normalized weighted values which accrues from each um, uh, criteria to each of these alternatives. Once you find that you will basically find out the so called positive um, distance function and negative distance function and find out for what sets of values of j's here you will basically have p i s that means, it will be an element on that set and for what set of values of j's, it will be in the set of n i s which is negative ideal solution. So, p i s is the positive ideal solution and p n i s is the negative ideal solution. So, once you have this, what you will try to do? You will try to basically find out the set of the decisions. So, they would be basically for p i s you will try to find out the positive one and also so, so called how further it is from the positive one. So, one is set of closer values one is the set of, of further values. Similarly, when you do it with respect to the NIS, uh, you will find out the so how f close it is for the negative solution and how far it is from the negative solution. Now, when you have that, you will basically find out the ranking based on this uh, ideal solution distance both for the case for the PIS and the NIS. And once you do that, you will basically find out 
the so called uh, the ranking system based on both the four columns. Four columns are nothing to do with the rows or nothing to do with the columns what we have discussed about the alternatives and the criteria remember that. These are the basically the so called distance functions normalized distance function which I am getting with comparison to the PIS positive negative that means close and far from PIS. Similarly, the third and fourth column would be the corresponding distance function based on how close and far it is from the NIS. So, once you do that you will basically be able to find out uh, the ranking for each and every alternatives by co considering the combination of the criteria. Now, remember here I am again repeating when you are going to take the, the four columns two with respect to the PIS and two with respect to NIS the actual fact is that the first and the second column will be utilized to find out the so called positive benefit and the third and fourth uh, column would be utilized to find out the negative benefit. It is something to do with the concordance set and the discordance set. So, with this I will basically start and is discussing this the, once this very simple theoretical uh, concept with a very simple matrix and then go into trying to make a decision that how you choose a house based on the different criteria and the alternatives which are given. So, um, so let me go into the simple first set of um, concepts of um, the, the distance concept. Now, you remember that whenever we are trying to find out the distance, so distance can be of different varieties. So, distance can be Euclidean distance. So, in the Cartesian coordinate you have say for example, two, uh, two dimensional one, you have two values x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. So, if you want to find out the distance between those two points consider them as A and B. So, where A has a coordinate system as x 1 y 1 and B has a coordinate system as, as x 2 y 2. What you do is that you basically find out the difference between x's square them up, find out the difference between the y's square them up, add them up and find out the square root. So, you will basically have the Euclidean distance and as per the concept you have uh, if you want to find out uh, the difference between the points, the points are given as x 1 to x n and y 1 to y n, you basically find out the difference, square them up, add them up, find out the square root. Now, there are different norms of, of the distance functions. Some of them are in statistics concept, there are different type of norms. This is the Mahalanobis distance, Bhattacharya distance, then the in, in, in concept of information theory, they have the Hamming distance. In general concept of mathematics, you will basically the L 1 norm, L infinity norm, L 2 norm, L p norm. So, all these things are there, they can be utilized, but I am only going to consider the Cartesian coordinate in a very simple way to solve our problem. And obviously, these norms would have some concept of the distance which would be basically coming out from the utility function. We will consider the utility function to be because they are only four utility functions which we are considering. So, we will consider the utility function to be quadratic hence the returns to be normally distributed based on this we will be proceed. So, trying to basically minimize this distance if you remember gives us the information you will try to basically find out the difference in, in of the squares and then try to basically find out the average value of that and try to minimize that which leads out to, to the fact that you are trying to basically minimize the variance which is uh, characteristics which I have been talking time and again. So, the L 1 norm or Manhattan distance. So, in, in Manhattan, New York the all the roads are perpendicular to each, each other. So, based on that they are just, just rectangle setup. So, that is why it is known as the Manhattan norm. So, L 1 norm is basically this distance where you find out the, uh, the mod of the difference of these values uh, which is basically um, uh, here I have not just let me change, change it I have not done it. So, the Manhattan norm would be given by the sum of the mod of these values of the errors um, errors you know, the, the, the differences and then you will find basically find out the the values one minute. So, in the Mahanomi's distance you basically find out the the there are two random vectors you basically find out the multiplication of those differences and find out um, them multiplied by the covariances. So, what you are trying to do is in some way trying to find out the variance and trying to uh, 
minimize that and try, try and find out the minimum one for the Mahalanobis one. Similarly, for the, the Hamming distance, the values would be basically the position the, is, is the number of position at which the corresponding values are different. You will find out the differences, find out whether it is 10 or 15 in number, you report that number that will give you what is the overall um, n num n, n means the number of such differences which are there which will give you how far or how close those two vector set of points are. Then for the um, L infinity norm, you basically find out the max of these uh, differences between uh, x and y. So, you have x and y is the, um, the difference you find out and then you find out the maximum of this distance for the L infinity norm. And for the LP norm, you basically find out the dif differences uh, in the mod value, try to find out to the pth power and then add them up and then find out the, 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 the square or say for example, the, the power 1 to the power p based on which you will try to basically find out the, the LP norm distance. Now, here as I mentioned, we will only consider the L2 norm which is the Euclidean one based on which we will do the calculation. So, now first the part what we will consider is a very simple theoretical example and then I will go into the as, as somewhat practical example where your main set of information is being given where you want to find out how you want to purchase a house depending on different criteria. So, assume the value of x which is the matrix of the decision values. So, these are given by and this is a remember this is the m cross n matrix. These are cells values are given by x 1 1 I am only reading the, the topmost row x 1 1 to x 1 n. So, that means corresponding to the first alternative what are the so called values you accrue for that alternative based on the fact that x 1 1 would be for the first cri the criteria, x 1 2 would be the for the second criteria. Similarly, the last one x 1 n would be for the last criteria. Similarly, if I go to the last row, so x m 1 would basically the value which is accruing from the um, uh, criteria 1 to the m th alternative. Similarly, x m n would basically be the value which is which is accruing from the nth criteria to the mth alternative. So, once you have that so called decision values, they are given remember that that will be given. So, you need to find out the normalized values. So, we are using the very simple concept of the normalization concept which is uh, x i j divided by the square root of the sum of the squares of these values for each and every cell. Now, the word um, what I said last is basically each and every cell would be either considering or the row wise or the column wise. So, say for example, I want to find out the normalized value for x 1 1. So, I can either do the normalization along the, the first uh, column or along the first row. So, if it is along the first column the actual values in the denominator. I am not talking about the square root, I am not talking about the summation, I am only talking about the squares inside. So, it will make you easy. So, basically you find out the squares, add them and, and find out the square root. So, the values which will basically add them are corresponding to the fact if you are going through the column wise, it will be x 1 1 whole square, then you will basically have x 2 1 whole square. The, so, 2 1 which I am mentioning is in the um, uh, subscript and the square values is in the in the superscript in the on the top. Then the third value will be x 3 1 square till the last value it will be x m 1 square. You add them up square root and if you find out then each values along the first col column would be divided by the fact which I mentioned. Now, if you are trying to find out the normalization concept, okay, another thing which I should mention. So, once you have normalized, so if you go to the second column you will basically use each and every cell values which, which, uh, which are there in the second column. You will basically square each of them, add them up square root and that would be the denominator in each and every values which these would be utilized 
to divide each and every values in the second column. Similarly, for the third column, the value which you will utilize to divide each and every cell for the third column would be the corresponding square of each and every value for the third column, which would basically be x 1 3 whole square, x 2 3, uh, 2 3 whole square, x 3 3 whole square till the last one which will be x m n whole square, m, m 3 whole square. Now, if you are doing the normalization along the rows, so let us consider the first row, the values which will be coming in a denominator would be likewise like this. It will be x 1 1 whole square, then plus it will be x 1 2 whole square, then plus x 1 3 whole square to the last value which is x 1 whole square. Now, if I go corresponding use, use this concept go to the last row, the corresponding value which will be coming in a denominator again I am, I am not going to mention the square root value, I am not going to mention the sum, I am only mentioning the values which will be summed up, these are like this x m 1 whole square plus x m 2 whole square dot dot till x m n whole square. So, once you have that you will basically have so called the normalized set which I will mention as r. So, these are the values which I have done. So, their normalization can be done either row wise or column wise. I am not going to read details what is done here, but you will surely understand. So, assume the values which are given for the x matrix the the priority so called values which are here are the first I am only read the first row which is basically 10, 25, 25, 30, 15. Similarly, the last row is 20, 30, 30, 35, 5. Now, remember one thing here the number of this, uh, this alternatives is 4 in number which is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row and the number of criteria which are there which is the first column, second column, third column, fourth column, fifth column. That means, 4 number of alternatives and 5 number of criteria. Now, consider the value of 40. So, what would 40 mean? That means, it would mean for the third alternative, the value being accrued by the third uh, criteria would be 40. Similarly, if I consider 5 here, so it means that for the fourth um, alternative, the value being accrued by the last criteria is 5. So, once you have that, you normalize. Again, use either the, the row wise or the column wise. Now, here what I have used is, I have given these values, but I have used two different calculations in order to make you understand. So, in this case, what you can do? If you find out the square root, so obviously the values would be 10 divided by the sum which square which is 10 square 100, 5 square 25, 15 square 225 for 20 square 400. So, this value would be utilized for each and every um, value calculation in the first column. Similarly, so the, if I go to the second column, the corresponding square values are 6 25 square 6 25, 15 square 225, 25 square 6 25, 30 square 900. So, these values are given. So, here I have considered the square root in the corresponding uh, third, fourth, fifth. I am not considering the, the square root, but I am just giving an example. So, they are again square values of each and every corresponding cell values in the third column. Similarly, fourth, so we basically find out the square root of, of uh, so I should also mark it with blue color, so you will understand. So, blue goes blue, green goes green, red goes red, yellow goes yellow. So, the blue one means I am squaring 30 which is 900, 40 which is 1600, 45 which is 2025, 35 which is 1225. Similarly, come to the last column. Fifteen square, 
10 square, 10 square, 5 square. So, these are the values. So, once you have this the normalized values considering the square root 1 I have these. So, if you change it, it will be, be giving you different values. So, if you want it let me show you the differences. So, it will be easy. So, I will use the excel sheet. So, I will use this table these values. So, let me write them 10, I will call it myself and I wrote it down. So, there is no mistake. I am calling for the first column 10, 5, 15, 20, 10, 5, 15, 20, which is 10, 5, 15, 25, 15, 25, 30, 25, 15, 25, 30. I go to the, so I should also mention that what I mentioned. So, it will be a 1, a 2. So, it will be easy for you to understand. So, these are the alternatives and so obviously criteria. I will use C, C 1, C 2, not that C concept which is coming out when you do the concordance discordance set. I will continue using C here. So, so there were 5 criteria. So, it is done. So, let me come to the third. 25, 35, 40, 30, 25, 35, 40, 30, 25, 30, 40, 30, 30, 30, 45, 35, 30, 30, 30, 40, 45, 35, 30, 40, 45, 35, 15, 10, 10, 5, 15, 10, 10, 5. Now, I will calculate different values. So, I will write the weights later on. So, let me write them. I would, okay, let me, if you are, if you are insisting. So, I will do first the simple normalization, which is sum. So, this should be dollared in order that it does not move values. So, I have. So, now see. So, this value is basically first cell divided by the sum of all the cells. This is the second cell divided by the sum of the cells. This is the third cell divided by the sum of the cells. This is the fourth cell divided by sum of the cells. So, I will I'll take another few extra minutes for this class. It will be exceeding 30 because I want to finish 30 minutes because I want to finish this table. So, this would be divided by sum So, it will be dollar here, dollar here dollar here, dollar here. So, done. So, this will be 25 divided by sum. So, I put a dollar. So, I fixed it. Copy done. Come to the fourth column. put a dollar here, dollar here, dollar here. So, this is done and last column sum of this. So, put a dollar here. So, copy. So, last now, to wrap it up this class. So, obviously, you have um, normalized along the columns. So, let us find out. Obviously, this will be true, but I want to show it to you. So, this is 1, 1, 1. 
So, if you could have done it along the rows that would have been the same. So, with this I will end this 33rd lecture and in the 34th and the 35th uh, which will be the last two lectures for the 7th week I will try to wrap up the, uh, the example of buying the house in the using the Topsys method. Have a good day and thank you very much for your attention.